Hello and welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. We've been working on the Sustainable Urban Design app today. We are coming back into Django and Wagtail. We're defining a new model, uh, Django model, and adding that to the user interface. The purpose of this model is so that people can collaborate on urban design projects. They can say, you know, we're working in this city or this district or this country, and um, here's the purpose of our, our project. That's as far as we're getting today, but uh, the idea will be that then they can share resources and views of the geographic scope of that project through our user, our JavaScript user interface, where they can define parameters such as uh, we would like every resident to be within two kilometers of a grocery store, or something like that, and see how many of the households in the project extent meet that criteria, and track that over metric over time. That's kind of the generic, uh, general purpose or general idea behind the, uh, the project. Today's changes are, are very minimal, uh, just defining the model and uh, a way to edit uh, and add those projects. So we'll look at, to actually, let's look at how it works in the um, UI. As an aside, I do want to give a shout out to this Turku open platform. Uh, it's really exemplary. Um, it's a, in the same vision, uh, really, as th uh, this Sustainable Urban Design Project. You essentially can decide how far people should be from um, amenities. Uh, various types, whether they're commercial, retail outlets, or you know, food and health, other necessary activities, schools, groceries, walking. Um, you just decide how far they should be, and then you can actually just kind of query around the area. And it, behind the scenes is doing like a street network analysis to see how, uh, using the street network, uh, how far you can travel, uh, 400, 400 meters, and you know how many? What are this the scores across each category for that? This is a super cool project. Uh, it's also got some really nice um, kind of heat maps where they've pre-computed some, I would say, livability metrics that we're really interested in as well in this project, like mobility, how easily people can get around to key things. Uh, so this is a very powerful analytical tool. It lets you kind of define the extent of your analysis and the, and the desired uh, qualities. Uh, what we're aiming for with this, our project is a little bit more granular control over the um, parameters, like how you define walkability and, and how far you should be from, uh, you know, mobility things like bus stops or grocery stores. You know, we've showcased that in a previous summary video, so I don't want to get too far off track. I want to just show what we've built today. This is summarizing today's hangout, um, but giving the general picture of why we're building the project in there and inspiration we're taking. So a project is really just. Uh, right now, two fields, a title and a rich text description that can include um, links. I've uh, excluded most of the other rich text uh, field options like embedded media as I don't want to get too complicated right off the bat, but uh, you know, headers, bold and italic text and line breaks might be useful as well as linking, uh, for example, to the City of Tampere website. For example, there you go. Now we will save that. This is a Django model, so it, it's not really following the Wagtail um, model flow of uh, publishing or drafting and things like that. I opted for the Django model to keep it simple. Uh, so we have to also updated uh, today updated Wagtail to the latest version. Uh, is it 2.10, I think it is, something like that, which gives us a nice uh, feature that I actually requested. Uh, and it, um, it's really nice that, uh, you know, the Wagtail community are so active and receptive to ideas and willing to take them up, even though I didn't really myself have the uh, skills or inclination to do it. They saw value in the idea and um, implemented it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the front end. Essentially what we've got on the Wagtail admin the, um, is the list of projects and you can edit them and search for them. On the front end, we allow users to discover projects 
by going to this projects page, it simply lists the um, title right now, but we could, for example, add the description here, but you can click on the project and you see the rich text and title text rendered properly. So again, this is not a oh, sweeping change, not really an advanced or elaborate feature, but it's a key concept in our uh, project um, and allowing hopefully to you know, facilitate collaboration um, multidisciplinary collaboration because you have people working at different levels and different layers of the urban tapestry, transport networks, um, utilities, zoning, health, welfare, education, safety, all of those uh, are specializations and they come together to form a common uh, project typically, uh, but aren't inherently required for any given project, at least by our definition. So here's the feature I actually requested that regular old Django model pages uh, that um, didn't used to have the wagtail icon down here because this icon only kind of made sense for, for wagtail pages because there's a few other links like edit this page. Uh, but it was inconsistent and it was a little bit confusing uh, what, you know, to the end user who's not maybe familiar with wagtail. Why is the wagtail menu only appearing on some pages? There was a technical reason for that. Um, but I think in some levels our job is in software developers is to kind of uh, get beyond technical limitations and solve usability problems and s focus on user needs and Wagtail has uh, really gone to great extent I think in general uh, to make a very very user friendly um, content management system so I can't <laughs> uh, compliment the Wagtail project enough it's been really nice to work with from a developer experience and the user experience so let's take a look at the code we defined a, a regular Django model with a title and description field. This description field is actually using one of the wagtail uh, fields. It's called a rich text field. It basically stores the, um, the text as HTML in the database. Uh, do we have a post? And um, sanitizes it so that only certain tags can pass through. So let's just take a look here. We Now with our project, if you're on the Docker Compose up, you'll get um, a Postgres database instance as well as um, PG admin. So we can view and edit some data and interact with the database uh, visually. It's pretty cool. So yeah, I've only created one project. It gets a primary key, which is an auto incrementing integer title field, which is var 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 variable character field, and then the text description, which is rich text, allowing certain HTML tags to pass through that are defined here and the paragraph is, I think, a default one. Then we're going to register this with the Wagtail admin so that you can create uh, projects in the back end. So we just need to tell Wagtail when it builds the form, which it automatically does for us, how to render the fields. And it'll automatically detect the uh, data type and render the appropriate field. And this one, we tell it to render a rich text field. And then it'll check out the uh, widget list here, the feature list, and render only those buttons. Pretty cool. Uh, being a, it's a Django model, we have to define the string representation, the default string, and we wanted to be able to get a link to this to specific project. So we just defined the git app salute URL and returned a reverse path to a view, which we'll look at in a minute, and passing in an argument. Registering things models with the Wagtail admin is pretty straightforward and well documented. You create a class that's inherits from the model admin. You tell it what model you're working with. You can create a uh, select a menu icon. There's a I think about one or about a dozen or so um, icons that Wagtail comes with. You can install more through like Font Awesome, Wagtail Font Awesome, or things like that. I just kind of kept it with the default for now. You can give things a weight so you can control the order in the menu. Uh, Wagtail Admin has a settings menu, so you can have nested. Not only can you have nested menus which re like reports, but you can create custom settings. Well, we might come to that in another, another, uh, for another feature. We might create a custom setting. I can't think of the, what it is off the top of my head, but I've been sort of reflecting on this project a lot. Uh, and the Explorer is actually this top menu where you can kind of drill down and explore the Wagtail page hierarchy. Wagtail page uh, model uh, is like a tree. And um, Django model it's just flat database tables. Um, 
So these wouldn't necessarily, these projects wouldn't necessarily, as far as I understand, come into the Explorer anyway, but so I just left the, the default false. When you render the list of projects, it's a table more or less. Uh, you can just uh, select or specify which fields to render as table columns, as well as which fields should be searched. So if we had multiple projects here, I could narrow it down by searching and other attributes. If it, you can just search and filter, it's pretty cool. Uh, we just don't have any of those things to dim it to showcase right now. And then you just register it with um, Wagtail. One gotcha is that you have to name it Wagtail underscore hooks. Uh, I had a typo in the, the file name and for like five minutes or so I was like, what is going on? Why isn't it appearing in the menu? I was getting frustrated. Um, but yeah, I had it, uh, it's just I had to rename the file. Uh, I kind of think that's a little bit of a bad design. Uh, for example, if I wanted to name this admin or something, uh, I know which kind of collides with the Django convention, but um, anyway, I guess, uh, you know, it is a thing in Django that you have uh, files that are named specific, specific uh, to their function, like your models are in your model file, and that allows the framework to discover them. So anyway, yeah, be careful, make sure there's no typos in your names. Uh, so yeah, we didn't do anything with admin pi. We created a view that two views, and we're just using regular Django class-based views. So this is why we're using a modern uh, and mature uh, and long-standing uh, uh, web development framework. So we just get some really mature features out of the box, and um, it handles the, the the main path, the critical path of, uh, that so many people have already trod and we just define our own specific logic. So with a list view, you just tell it, you review name, you inherit from list view, tell it what model you're working with. Uh, the context object is what you get in the template when you're um, interacting with the data. So to make it a little bit more uh, developer friendly, we'll give it a, a name, a meaningful name. Otherwise it's called a context object or something like that. And we're just being explicit. Um, to specify our template name and the default pattern for templates is um, in, it's something that's derived from the class name. I don't remember exactly how the pattern works, but this way I can just have uh, our own way of organizing things and it's, it's not ambiguous. Same thing here with project view. So we have a list page that lists all the projects. And then a, um, a single, a detail view that lists a single project. And basically, in order for those uh, to be accessible, we need to give them URLs. So for our default namespace here, we're in the project URLs. Uh, so we're, everything is going to be namespaced here based on our global URL configuration, which is here. We just import the project URLs and namespace it. So project slash and then our top level r route just renders the, the list view here as a view and then when you click on a link it adds the primary key as a URL parameter there and renders that project view it passes in the argument and we'll give it a name here so that we can use that name in our model reverse function project view. The get absolute URL returns a URL to get to a particular model instance. This reverse function takes a view name as the first argument and any keyword arguments, you can also pass them as an, um, an array, an ordered list of arguments, but the explicit is better than implicit, so we'll just use keywords here. And our templates are relatively simple for the projects list. We have just a you know, static header. This really should be an H1. And I gave our context object a name, if you recall. The uh, context object in the project list view is projects, and in, in the product project view is project. So it makes sense. We can iterate over those, display a list item, and then make a link to each one, getting the absolute URL for the hypertext reference and display the 
title is the link text. When you click on one of those links, you're taken to the view and it renders a template. Project title, I use the correct header level here. We render the project description as a rich text field. Uh, through the rich text field filter, that means it's going to sanitize the output, only allowing the rich text um, tags. I think general the general set of those. The input field uh, probably filters. This is my guess. It sanitizes the tags that are not specified in the input widget, and this renders it instead of escaping it or instead of rendering it as just raw HTML. So if I take this off and I refresh, you see we just get the HTML when I put that back on there it'll render it so yeah that's it in a nutshell um, the idea is here people whether or not they're signed up can kind of visit the site and get an idea of what projects are being uh, developed and discussed and you, you know maybe even search geographic areas or areas of other interest uh, through keyword tags there may be public or private projects all of that's up in the air right now we just got the basic feature in place and before kind of settling in on any specifics about whether or not we'll have public and private things or geographic querying, we want to kind of tie back in the JavaScript interface to this idea of a project. So that'll probably be what we'll work on maybe tomorrow or over the next week or so. Yeah, all right. So if you want to check out these specific changes, uh, sustainable uh, github.com, sustainable urban design slash app. And we're, this is pull request number 129. So even if this has been merged you can still see the specific changes that we've made not only today but potentially other changes uh, in the future before um, you know finalizing this work this pull request here if you'd like to get involved we have a lot of issues uh, we're open to suggestions there's a lot of ways to contribute to the project you don't have to be a coder if you just want to test stuff out or help us with the documentation this is all of our developer documentation we're going to move over to developer docs section but you can see we're following the um, all contributors specifications so you can uh, help us with design or outreach or community building or documentation uh, there's a lot of ways that we would we would welcome new contributors so this has been a code buddies live code hangout uh, if you're interested in getting involved with uh, like-minded uh, coders in general stop by codebuddies.org it's a really uh, open and active community codebuddies org platform is also open source you can go to github.com slash codebuddies all right well thanks for your time have a great day and stay well